this deck wins in the late game. So when you're looking at your opening hand, you wanna make sure you see cards like these walls, this propaganda, this death touch creature, or these board wipe cards, because this is what's going to allow you to slowly remove your opponent's creatures so that you can stay alive long enough to be able to get off some of the really explosive combos and powerful plays this pre-con can do. There has never been a pre-con that can generate as much mana as this pre-con can. Inside your deck, you're gonna find a copy of Sage of the Maze. Sage of the Maze reads, tap to add two mana in any combination of colors. Tap until the end of turn, target land you control becomes an XX citizen creature with haste in addition to its other types where X is twice the number of gates you control. Activate only as a sorcery. Then you can tap an untapped gate you control and you can untap Sage of the Maze. So for new players, what does this mean? That means if I have a gate on my battlefield, I can tap this for two mana in any combination of colors. I get to tap this to untap Sage of the Maze to then tap the Sage of the Maze to have generated four mana. Now, what if we could turn this basic land into a gate. Our commander Omo reads, whenever Omo Queen of Asuva enters the battlefield or attacks, put an everything counter on each of up to one target land and up to one target creature. Each land with an everything counter on it is every land type in addition to its other types. Each non-land creature with an everything counter on it is every creature type. So let's say Omo enters the battlefield and I put an everything counter on this forest. So now this forest suddenly gains the keyword gate among other keywords. The reason this is relevant is because now when I tap this for two mana, I can tap this to untap this, to tap this to make four mana, which means that I get to tap this to untap this to tap this to make six mana. And let's say I have another land in play that also happens to be a gate. I can then tap this to untap this to tap this for eight mana. And then I have another land that's a gate. I can then tap this to untap this to tap this for 10 mana. And then let's say I had a mana reflection on the battlefield the entire time I was doing this, which means that every time I tapped the Sage of the Maze, every time I tap permanent for mana, it produces twice as much mana of that instead. So instead of me having 10 mana in my mana pool, I now have 20 mana in my mana pool. And what if I had a Magus of the Candelabra on the battlefield as well? I can then spend X amount of mana to untap X target lands, which means I can untap one, two, three, four lands, I should say, actually, if I use four of the 20 mana I just generated. So I'm gonna go down to 16 mana. I'm gonna tap this, and then I'm gonna untap all these lands again which means that I get to go ahead and I get to start this combo all over again, generating all of this mana. Guys, I'm telling you, there has never been a pre-con that will ever generate as much mana as this pre-con can. This pre-con is absolutely insane. I'm telling you guys, this, this deck is very strong. So um, just keep in mind, you're gonna be generating a lot of mana playing this deck. Now, as we're generating all this mana, we can use that mana to cast cards like Apex Devastator, the Hydroid Crisis, which can draw us a ton of cards, the Drown in Dreams, which says target player mills twice X cards. So we can literally just have somebody lose the game automatically. And then we can cast a Finale Revelation, which is gonna allow us to draw a ton of cards, allow us to untap five lands and give us no maximum hand size for the rest of the game. Guys, when you have specifically these cards right here, don't cast them unless you absolutely have to because you could cast these cards at an earlier amount of mana to draw some cards or to make somebody mill. But these cards right here can actually win you the game. So I would highly recommend just saving these cards for the moments that you generate the mana combo or a similar combo like what I talked about earlier. Inside this deck, there are cards that allow you to search your library for any land and put them onto the battlefield tap, put them into your hand, or in the case of Hour of Promise, you can search your library for up to two lands and put them onto the battlefield tap. So when you cast this spell, you could search for a copy of Dark Depths and a Thespian Stage. Dark Depths reads, 
Dark Depths enters the battlefield with 10 ice counters on it, you can pay 3 mana to remove an ice counter. When Dark Depths has no ice counters on it, sacrifice it. If you do, create Merit Lodge, a legendary 2020 Black Avatar creature token with flying and indestructible. Now, the reason why you grab both of these cards is because Thespian Stage allows itself to become a copy of target land. The thing is, is that as you pay the 2 mana and tap Thespian Stage to become a copy of Dark Depths, because Thespian Stage was already on the battlefield, it's not going to have any ice counters on it because Dark Depths only gains ice counters because it had to enter the battlefield. Because this foregoes this, the moment this becomes a copy of Dark Depths, this will immediately become sacrificed because it has no ice counters on it. And then you immediately would create Merit Lodge, the 2020 token with flying and indestructible. So if you couldn't already tell, this precon is extremely complex. So in key number five, make sure that you play test this deck, which means that you're gonna take the deck while you're at home, you're gonna shuffle up, you're gonna imagine that you're playing against an opponent and you're gonna draw a hand and you're gonna act like you're playing against somebody and you're going to practice playing this commander deck. If you don't know how to play test commander decks, I have literally hundreds of videos on this channel that have existed for years now showing people how to play test commander decks. And Command Zone also made a video on their YouTube channel where they also go over playtesting cards, which is extremely similar to the content that I make. So if you go ahead and start playtesting this commander deck, the combos that I talked about inside this video you'll be able to see while you practice so that when you go out and play, you know exactly what you're doing, okay? Always remember everybody, eat healthy, okay? Work out every single day. And most importantly, you guys gotta remember to believe in yourself, all right? Peace out, people.